Y'all sound good. Y'all sound real good. Amen. Uh, just uh, as we uh, said before, just kind of be in prayer. Be praying for the Brown family and all their extended family and relatives and all during this uh, challenging time for them. Amen. Amen. Y'all will knock it down. Amen. Thank you, though. Y'all get down these big hands. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Praise the Lord. Y'all give a big hand in that. Yeah. That brother's a blessing. Yeah. He hit the road. He hit the road and always saying, man, I got to be here. Man, I got to some kind of way to be here. So I just thank God for his spirit. Amen. Amen. He, just, he just decided he was just going to help me. And Lord knows I needed it. Thank you, so I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Lord. Um, Praise God. And, and, and really, that's a kind of a segue into what we're, we're talking about. Um, we're talking about success uh, as it relates to what God is saying to us in our lives. And he gave us a, a pretty interesting word a couple of weeks ago. He said, success is different. Everybody thinks of success as arriving. Boy, we made it. And, and seeing the finished product. But how many of y'all know um, the finished product is just the is just the image of the process that yes. it took to get there? Yes. Y'all need to get that. That's, yes. that's, that's a bigger statement than you realize. Okay. The real the real success didn't take place in the arrival. The real success took place in the process of going through the journey and not allowing anything to stop you from getting there. Amen. 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 Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah, arriving, reaching a destination it is, a, is a, a sign of success. But the real success didn't take place at the destination. The real success took place in the process. So we were able to talk a little bit last week about the process and one of the things that we talked about was purpose. And we talked about uh, focus. Somebody say focus. focus. Now focus is, and I kind of gave a couple of um, um, uh, definitions, but I want to I give you this one again before we go on to what we're going to talk about today. Um, focus is the ability to disregard distractions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. while working to achieve a goal, a mission, an assignment, or a task. I'll say that again. Focus is the ability to disregard distractions while working to achieve a goal. In other words, Satan's job is to distract you from staying locked in to what God has told you related to where he's telling you to go. We use the um, situation of the disciples going across to the other side. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And Satan or uh, the enemy sent a distraction which caused fear to come into the, uh, the spirit of those disciples to the point that they stopped thinking about the arrival to the destination and began to be concerned about their lives. Satan wants you to be more concerned about your life than achieving the goal or destination that God has for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he sends stuff at you. Yeah. He sends situations and circumstances at you to get you to take your focus off of where you're going, off of what he said to you, and get you to become now concerned more about something else. That what he said. Somebody say amen. amen. We looked at it, and I want to, I want to, um, I want to go on beyond that. But I want you to, in your time, look at Luke chapter eight, verse twenty-two, because that's going to give you the, the back, the, the backdrop for what it is that we talked about today. I want to talk a little bit about the one of the keys that God has given you to be able to manage that focus. In, in other words, He's not just saying to you, "Yeah, stay focused. Just keep your eyes on that. You'll be all right." No, he's giving us tools. Yeah. Matter of fact, he said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. I've given you the keys, he said. I've given them to you yeah. to use 
So you got to understand that he wouldn't give you the keys to the car if he didn't tell you to drive. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I give my keys to you, then I'm intending for you to drive. Somebody say amen. amen. So as it relates to that, last week we discussed a word that I received, which I believe was a word from God related to our success. The blessing of the word is that God would not be discussing success if success was not coming. Amen. 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 The thing that we saw last week is that success is not just a place of destination, but the process that we must encounter, experience, and manage along the way. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12. We discovered that the primary tool the enemy uses to keep you from your success is distractions. The way to handle those distractions is by staying focused on God and the assignment, the purpose, the vision, or the God-ordained next step to victory. If Jesus says, let us go to the other side, you stay focused on the other side and not on the storm. I don't really have time to do it, but I have to what? What God gave me as an image as I was writing that, and I was kind of going through that, but he gave me an image uh, of, of maybe a, a, a group of us up here, and we up here rowing, stroke, stroke, and then Jesus is in the back, he sleeps, stroke, stroke, and here come the storm. Well, he just kind of gave me an image of them beginning to sing and praise and worship. He just gave that image to me yeah. about saying about the other side. Mm -hmm. Other side, other side. We are on the other side. Yeah. On the other side, the other side. They just started singing it. So you know what? They would have never focused on the storm <laughs> had they been singing and praising and worship about the other side. So, so, so what we should do is we should stay focused on the other side. We should give, come up with praise and worship song about the other side. Right in the middle of the storm. <laughs> right in the middle of it. Just, I mean, you know, just come up, bust out a good one. So while you, when you, while you at home and something is going on and, and you, you, your finances is kind of all, you know, touchy. <laughs> You know, a little touchy. Instead of you going, Lord, oh, what am I going to do? Lord, help me. All you need to do is say, Father, I thank you. I got all my needs met. According to your riches in glory. I got all I need. I got all. They'll mess him up. Mm. Wait a minute now. Yeah. So, so, so somebody say focus. focus. Yeah, yeah. That will show that you're not distracted from your appointment. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, I, I'm not distracted. You, I'm not letting you distract me from what I know God has already done. Yeah. That's true. I know he's done it for me. Yes, if he said it, I believe it. And if he said it, and I believe it, it's so. Uh -huh. Somebody say amen. amen. Say he said it, he said, I believe it, I believe it. And, it's so. and it's so. And just like that. So we don't let circumstances and situations come at us to cause us to get rattled. Amen? amen. Now that's, 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 you got to practice that. Because you're not doing that by feeling. You're not doing it by feeling. You're doing it by faith. Yeah. Because faith is the substance of things. Oh, the evidence of things. So you're, you're not doing it because it feels right, because everything is good, and you just want to celebrate God. No, you want to celebrate God because he said what he said. You believe it regardless of how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. Now, everybody in here, everybody in here got something going on yeah. that ain't really a blessing right now. That's not a negative confession. We're all dealing with life. So these are 
techniques that God has given us so that we can experience the victory that he paid the price for on the cross. Amen. 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 And listen, it doesn't, it's not predicated on your uh, education. It's not predicated on what side of the tracks you grew up on. It ain't predicated on what folk did before you. It ain't predicated on folks what they will do after you. It's all predicated on you making a decision that I'm going to take what God has promised that I can have. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah, we're not going to sit around and just going to be handed to us. We're going to have to actually step out on faith and do what God has directed us to do. Hebrews chapter 12, y'all there? Yeah. <laughs> Notice what it says in verse 1. It says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with a so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, somebody say, lay aside. Lay aside, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Yeah. And let us do what? Run. Run how? With patience. The race that is the what? Set before us. Every one of y'all got a race set in front of you. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord Jesus. Every one of us has some sort of a race, some sort of a, 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 a goal or a mission or a plan or a set place that God has placed us to function and to do what he's called you to do. Now, everybody had been called to preach. Amen. Per se, behind this pulpit. But I can tell you, you have been called to preach life. you get that. you get that later. Yeah, yeah, your life should be preaching a message. Your life should be saying something. And it should be preaching about the goodness of God. Amen? Now, notice what it says uh, in verse 2. It says... Looking unto who? Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy, say joy, joy. that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And the ears, say ears, the ears set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So now what was this joy that he had? What was this joy? The joy was the finished assignment that he set before him. Of forever making it possible for whoever or whosoever desires spending eternity with the Father. That was his joy. His joy was knowing that the finished product was a, a kingdom of believers Amen. who were being victorious in this life and transition over into eternity forever. Amen. So he kept that in front of him while he was being beat. Yeah. While he was being scourged. They say scourged where they, they hit you with this thing and it rips the flesh off of you when they, when they hit you with it. While he was being ridiculed and while he was being uh, 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 embarrassed and while he was being tortured, all the while he kept in front of him the finished product what it was going to be like when it was done. That allowed him to endure all of that. So what is that saying to us? What that's saying to us is we need to, first of all, we need to have a, a, a word from God on what we're doing. See, Jesus was in his purpose. Yes. See, let's not overlook that. He knew exactly why he was here. And he wasn't doing something else. He wasn't even trying to supply his own needs. Wow. He wasn't even trying to, well, Lord, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little hungry. I think I'll uh, try to see if I can't find some food somewhere. He wasn't even trying to find a place to live. He had a place to live. But his total focus was on accomplishing exactly what he was here. Now, I'm just going to put a little pin in that because I want you to ask yourself, have you even come close to understanding or finding out Jesus. why are you here? Yes. Yeah. I, want you to, I want you to do something. Here's your homework. Mm -hmm. Got a homework assignment. You ready? Mm -hmm. Homework? That's not real homework. 
<laughs> tonight, just before you go to bed, I want you to pray. And, and first say, Lord, I want to thank you for bringing me to the end of this day. <laughs> and before I go to sleep, I want to ask you one question. Will you show me my purpose? I'm going to do that. Now be prepared. <laughs> be prepared for an answer. Amen? Ask him what your purpose is. Ask him to show you your purpose. See, only people who ask questions are able to get answers. Ask him what your purpose is. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Because God Remember now, he's your father. He wants the best for you. Yeah. Say amen. Amen. So, he didn't focus, Jesus didn't focus on the issues. He focused on the results of getting through the journey. Success is not the, not just the increase, but it's not being distracted to deal with demonic storms that come our way. So today, I want to talk about the key way to doing just that. The key is confessing the word of God. Come on. The key to not getting distracted is confessing the word of God. It's got nothing to do with how you feel. If you only wait until you feel like it, you'll never do it. I spent, from the time that I was in fourth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, till I was 35, six, seven, somewhere in there, I was in athletics. I played sports all the way through to professional level. And not once did I ever feel like working out. Not once did I say, whoop, oh, I sure feel like going over here and running. Oh, I sure feel like lifting these weights. Can y'all tell I lift out my muscles? Y'all can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never felt like it. But the thing that inspired me more and more was the results I started getting when I started doing it. So, results inspired me more than feeling like it did. Well, if y'all get that, y'all gonna pull up in here and just one of the Mercedes. And I'll give y'all, let me ride it. What am I saying? I'm saying to you that there's a place to go beyond feelings, mm -hmm. to get into moving into the, the principles of God that will create results in your life that will inspire you to keep going. Uh -huh. That's why it's important for us to see manifestation. Somebody say amen. amen. Now y'all 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 gonna get that later, but that's that's some that said something right there that y'all need to grab a hold to. Amen. So so let's let's look at look at Joshua. Go to Joshua one and eight. Y'all know this. We're talking about we're gonna talk about confessing the word. We're gonna talk about confessing the word. I think that one of the most critical areas of your Christian walk is confessing the word of God in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. I think it's one of the most critical functions that you have as it relates to being in the kingdom of God. Boy, and you can't be lazy on this one. You can't be lazy on this one. You can't be lazy. It, it, it's so critical. <coughs> Watch this. I have, every Bible, and I show this to everybody, every Bible I get, I got some notes that I, that I give myself. I have some notes here. And when I wear this one out, I'll get another one. And while I'm finishing using this one, I'm starting to write this same stuff over again in the new one. And I have some, you know, some pretty, pretty um, pointed instructions for myself. 
I'm giving myself instructions to hold on to no matter how long, how far we go. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. One of them is, number four says, daily confessions are critical. Amen. Daily confessions are critical. These are what I call, as a pastor's notes for ministry in life. Family, God, family, then ministry. Spouse, children, spouse first, then children. Some of us are putting other stuff in front of our spouses. Amen. That's a whole other message. Amen. Number two, when it comes to, to church, it's business. Amen. Then, daily confessions are critical. Number four, pray. pray. Help me to love people. Pray that. To, for God to help me to love people, even when people don't love me. Amen. You need to pray and ask, ask God to help you to love folk when folk don't love you. Amen. And I, 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 I got some other stuff, but I don't have time. But the main thing I want to point out is confession <coughs> is critical. There is something that I say out of the Word of God every day Amen. as a confession. Amen? Amen. So, so as it relates to that, we have a key to use that will allow us to experience victory and reach the destination that we have as we walk forward. Joshua 1 and 8. Notice what it says. Y'all there? Yeah. <clears throat> this book of the law, that's this book, shall not depart out of thy mouth. Out of thy mouth. Out of thy mouth. Notice. It go right to your mouth. First thing you say is you got to keep it in your mouth. You see that? But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do what? Do. To do it. Yeah, you got to do it. According to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way what? Right. And then thou shalt have what? So now it's saying here that what comes out of your mouth can determine whether you're prosperous and successful. Yeah. Yeah. What comes out of your mouth can determine whether you're prosperous and successful. Amen. This text says keep the word of God in your mouth. Yeah, meditate on it day and night. Yeah, yeah, to, to be observant, to do what's in it. But then it goes on to say, then you're going to make your way prosperous. And you're going to have good success. Well, sometimes we're waiting on God. God, I'm just waiting on you to prosper. Well, he said, put the word in your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Observe to do it. And you make your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous. So now it, it, it's critical that you, what you're saying is determining where you're going. You want me to show it to you again? Go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. You will make your way prosperous. You will talk your way into it. You will talk your way into your destination. He said, I, I'm giving you the ability to be prosperous. I'm giving you the ability to have good success. I'm giving you something to say. You say it, you speak it, you confess it, and you transform your life to another level. Remember, we're saying this time next year, our lives are going to be at a higher level. Not if we keep saying the same stuff. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Notice what it says in Proverbs 18 and what? It says, death and life are in the power of the what? Tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit what? Yeah. So now death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's interesting. Because we think death and life is in the power of what we out there doing. The truth of the matter is, death and life are in the power of your tongue. And whichever one you love, that's the fruit you're going to have. Whichever one you love. If you love talking death, you'll have it. 
If you love talking a lot, you'll have it. You know, death as a stand, the death, yeah, it, 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 it kind of, it's talking about life being distinguished, it, it, you know, distinguished, but it's not really talking about that or extinguished. It's not really talking about that. It's talking about not being successful. You can speak stuff that eliminates your ability to succeed. Amen. Or you can say things that can position you to succeed. Yes. Can it be that simple? I tried to just talk and stuff. I mean, you just can't uh, blab it and grab it. No, no, it's not blabbing and grabbing. Did uh, God blab and grab when he said, let that be light? And that was light? Was that blab and grab? Or was that calling those things that be not? As though they were. That's what that was. Amen. And then he gave you the ability to operate and function like that. The problem is we allow Satan to, to trick us into saying stuff that we don't really want. Amen. Just out of habit, just out of routine, just out of whatever it is, we're allowing ourselves to be deceived because we're saying stuff that fits the moment, but it's not God. Somebody say amen. amen. Is this making sense to anybody? Amen. So as it relates to that, we have to understand that God has given us the keys and given us the ability through his word. I said, my word and my word has delivered you from all destruction. Isn't that what he said? So we holding the key right here. And he says, keep it in your mouth. Keep it in your mouth. Keep it in your mouth. So you got to ask yourself right here. I always do my commercials right around here with rhetorical questions. How much word is in your mouth? How much word are you, you really effectively carrying and using in your life? How much? Not Lord have mercy. <laughs> Y'all will get that baby. Y'all get that. Lord have mercy. No, no. That's not the scripture you need. That's not the one you want. The one you want is, Father, I thank you that I'm here. By Jesus Christ. You know, there, there's a word for every circumstance in your life. Ah, he said there's nothing new under the sun. So there's nothing that can come about, nothing that can pop up, that God hasn't already given you a word to combat that circumstance with. Not just combat it, but win over it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It is a season of transition for the body of Christ. Amen. It is a season. Listen to me. This is a prophetic word. This is a season of transition as it relates to moving to the next move of God. There's another move coming, y'all. Amen. If, if you look over history, you'll see how God moved in seasons. He moved in generations. And you had a generation of those who were generals, an army of men and women of God who were assigned to transition the word of God, transition the kingdom from one phase to the next one. But a key component always travels, and that's the word of God. His word being applied is going to always transition to the next generation. Yeah. He's generational minded. Is anybody getting anything from, from what I'm saying? So, so watch this. So this is a word-based system. Watch this. We live in a word-based I say this all the time. We live in a word-based system. But it's also a word-created system. The system we live in is a system that was created by words. Amen. That's why words are so critical. Mm -hmm. Because the, act, the, the literal creation of this world came about through God speaking words. Amen. Get it now. Yeah. You ought to leave here today absolutely convinced and commit that you're going to fix your words. Amen. That's what I'm trying to get you to do today. I'm trying to inspire you to say something different than
understand what you've been saying. Yeah. Because the sum total of our lives are the words we've been saying for the last 20 years. So if you don't like where you are, go back and look what you've been saying. And stop it. If you've been speaking death, speak life. I would, I'm telling you, I would speak life over everything around me. I'd speak life over that car. I don't care if it's smoking and, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, Father, I thank you that the engine running smooth and butter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Lord, I thank you right now that it get good gas mileage. Yes. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that it's bought and paid for. Amen. Somebody ought to grab that right there. I'm telling you now. That's all I'm saying. Find some, find some life to speak. Speak some life to it. Speak some life to it. Yeah. Speak some life to your kid. Speak some life to your house. Speak some life to your job. Speak some life. I mean, because you have been given the, the ability and the power to speak life. Yeah. Speak life to your body. Yeah. Speak life to your body. Yeah. I said speak life to your body. Yeah. Somebody say amen. 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 So Jesus went to sleep in the boat on the journey, watch this, to the other side because he said, let us go to the other side. He understood the power of his own words. I'm going to sleep. I said it. It's over. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. I'm going to do this for a couple of, a couple of Sundays on, on confessions because I think it's... A, it's it's something that we gotta we gotta adapt and challenge ourselves on. And it's so easy to say the wrong stuff. Amen. Amen. I mean, it all, all, it's so easy to say the wrong stuff. So we we'll, we want to make sure that we're carry, we're life carriers, life carriers. Amen. 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 Hebrews eleven three says, through faith we understand that the what world. the worlds were framed by what. The world. And so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So, so, so we understand that this all the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that's the power of what he's handed you. He's handed you something that framed the worlds. You think it can't get your life going? And he's already framed worlds with it? Oh, boy, that's so good right there. He has given you something that framed worlds. I think we underestimate this sometimes. He's given you something that has framed worlds. The very earth we're walking around on was framed and created by words. How powerful is that? Then he gave you the words that he used to frame the very earth that you're walking on. The very sun that you're feeling on a good sunny day. He gave you the same thing he used to create it. The trees you see, the ocean you see, the very things that we see that makes up this entire universe. He, you notice it's an S on that. Yeah. He created worlds we've never even seen. Amen. With the same thing that he put in your hands. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you see the gravity? And, it, and, it, and, and boy, y'all just want us, well, let me see what I can create. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see if he, if he made a world with these words. Let me take these words and see if I can make a world myself in my own life. If I can build, let me, what can I build in my own life? It says he gave me the same stuff he used to build these, the world and the universes. Let me take them and build something. That's the power of the words. And so the enemy has to do something to keep you from saying these words. Because he knows you can build something that 
he can't stop it. He can't stop it. The power of God that operates in the words that he's given us are words of life. Thy word is life. Amen. Is that making sense to anybody? Is anybody seeing anything? So now watch this. Words are spiritual and they carry power. Look at Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12 and verse 14. Mm. I mean, I just, my pastor used to say, I dub a dog day to get some word from God and put it into a, a confession form and start saying it on a regular basis. Just, just saying it on a regular basis. You want to see? You want to see the results of that? Listen, listen. I got a left knee that was replaced about two years ago. About two years ago, it was replaced. I confessed over my knee. Father, I thank you. My left knee is fitly joined together and compacted by that, which every joint supplies to the edifying of the whole. I did it on purpose. I did it on purpose. Because it's my job as a pastor to model the word. Not just tell you about it, but to model it. Because if I'm not using it for myself and working it in my own life, how can I expect you to take it and work it in you? Was it work? You better believe it. Was it challenging? Absolutely. Did it hurt sometimes? Mm -hmm. I'm on the other side. Yeah. On the other side. And, I, and, and watch this. I'm still saying it. Oh, I'm not done. I'm still saying it. Why? Because there's some more life. There's some more life. See, see don't just get, the, don't just get your, 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 your new car and then be good. No. Keep saying it. There's some more life. There's another level. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes, Did I tell y'all to turn somewhere? I got, I got to run and I don't know where I was. <laughs> Watch this. A man shall be what? Satisfied. With what? Good. By what? The fruit of your mouth. mouth. You're going to be satisfied by the fruit of your mouth. So if you want satisfaction, you need to speak the word of God. Amen. And quit. Okay, I'll say that. Quit being feelings led. <laughs> Quit being led by your feelings. Your feelings will get you so messed up. Woo, you are you. Quit, quit letting being mad stop you from doing stuff. Quit letting getting upset stop you from doing stuff. Quit, quit, quit being scared stop you from doing stuff. Quit, quit being unsure stop you from doing stuff. Quit being tired stop you from doing stuff. Because you know he does have a scripture for being tired. He said that he can give you the spirit that quickens your mortal body. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body. Because you can't sit in here and go to sleep. <laughs> you got to say something. Yeah. You got to talk to your body and tell your body you're going to get in line. Yeah. The problem is we got too many folks letting our bodies talk to us. Yeah. Give me another pizza pie. Just one more pizza pie. It's <laughs> a now go on. Let's get one Let's cut the last piece in half and eat that. 30 minutes later, let's go and fill it. Let's go and eat it all. <laughs> Can I get a window? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know that. That's right. Our bodies can tell us stuff. Ooh, can get us all messed up. Get us caught up in stuff we never meant to get caught up in. Mm. I better go. I better 
it going. I don't know how we got together. I just, you know, I don't know. Your body talks to the dead We just gonna go over there for a little while. We ain't gonna stay. That's what your body is saying. We go, we gonna go in there. We gonna stay for a little while. We just gonna talk. Nobody will lie to you. We just gonna talk. I have to stay there for a while, but I got to go. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. So now really, as it relates to our lives, even salvation begins that way. Look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. It, I, I, very, our very transition into eternity began simply by us saying something. Believing something, most definitely. But after believing something, we had to say something. It is the heart and the mouth, the combination of your belief system being connected with your mouth. So you got to believe that I'm going to say this right. You got to believe that God did what he did for you. Then in connection with it, you got to say something with your mouth. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. You there? But what saith it? The word is where? Even in thy mouth. Wow. Boy, look at that. Even in your mouth. It's close to you. Even in your mouth. Watch this. And in thy heart. Watch this. That is the word of what? Faith. Which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. Confess with thy mouth. Confess with thy mouth. The Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart. Believe in thine heart. That God has raised him from the dead. Thou what? Yeah. Not maybe. Not maybe. Do you believe it in your heart? Yes. Did you confess it with your mouth? Yes. Then you sang it. Yes. Quit looking for a feeling. Oh, I just feel, oh, I feel saved. No, 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 no. You say it. when you believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Why? Because there's power in your mouth to change your life. Can anybody see what he's saying to us? Yeah. Let's start talking life. Let's start speaking the word of God to challenge our perm situations and our circumstances and move our lives. Why? Because we can build something new. We don't need a hammer. We don't need nails. We just need a word. We just need a word. That's all we need. We need one word from God can change your whole life. Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. For with the heart man believeth with unto righteousness. And with the what? Nah. Confession is made unto what? Salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. What does that mean? Your confession self got you into salvation. Amen. Amen. Confessing that you believe in God. That you believe he died for you on the cross. Confessing that. Believing it and speaking it out of your mouth transitions you to salvation. Calls you to become a new creature. Your belief and your confession calls you to become a new creature. You're a new creature. Because you said something. Now, if it's got the power to make you new again. Now, I'm not talking about your feet. Now, I know what they look like. I'm not talking about your hand. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about your hair. Praise God. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you, the spirit. And let me help you. Born again, confess Jesus as Lord. All that. Baptism, all that. But if you put yourself in the wrong place, the body gonna say, Yay! <laughs> some of y'all, some of y'all. Probably think I can't remember that. Yeah, 
I'm a music man. I love music. Love music. Love it. And some songs, every now and then, a song will pop on and I go, oh, yeah, I remember that song. <laughs> and your mind immediately go back to where you were when that song first came out. Devil, do that on purpose. Play some music for you. <laughs> Trying to throw you back. That's your flesh. That's why you got to manage and control your ear gate, eye gate, all gates. <laughs> because if you don't, you'll accidentally allow the enemy to replant stuff on the inside of you that you've thrown out. See, that's just a little bit like light a candle. Say that a little bit See, see, see how easy it come back? Yeah, yeah, y'all got all that stuff. The, the enemy do all that stuff out of us. So don't feel like you're not saved because you heard that song. You go, yeah! <laughs> That's just your flesh. You know, my pastor says this all the time. He used to say that he said, hey, don't ever turn your back on your flesh. Whatever you do, don't ever turn your back on your flesh. Whatever it did before, it'll do again oh, yeah. if you give it the opportunity. Yeah. If you let it and you give it the opportunity, don't come out. I read the Bible now. And I just, I just, I go to church on Wednesdays and Sundays. And I, and I continue to meditate on the Word. But if you go somewhere and you ain't got no business going, all right. Yeah. Even as a pastor, I'm very careful about where I go. And I'm not trying to be overly spiritual or religious. No. I'm just not turning my back on my flesh. Y'all, y'all, y'all know that we phone rings. 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. Pastor, it's a problem. I just need you to come over here. I said, baby, it's for you. I'm not playing. I said, hold on. I'm going to let you talk to Miriam because I think this is a, a lady situation. And I had it to her. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I am a prayed up man. I got the word of God on the inside of me, all around me, yeah, on my arm. I got a scripture right there. I got the scriptures all over myself and all of that. But I ain't going to know that no 11, 12 o'clock at night. No woman's out by myself. Not that I just, I'm scared I'm going to do something. I'm just not going to put myself in this situation. Does that make sense to anybody? Oh, my clock is gone. What y'all, did y'all start it today? Hasn't <laughs> it been good? Amen. Listen, say something. I'm going to have to pick this up later. I, I had some food. I had some confessions. I had some confessions. Uh, can I give y'all one? Yeah. Okay, well, somebody said two. Wait. <laughs> you speaking it, ain't you? Yeah. I heard that. I just want to give y'all, uh, and, and this is really, it, it's not what you think it is. It's not, um, it's not um, a pointed in direction. Why, why, why I'm waiting for this book? Look, get you a good confession book. The Bible, yes. And you can tailor some scriptures for yourself like I did with Ephesians for my body. I tailored, I found a scripture that talked about joints and, and, and the body. And I took it and I conformed it to what I was dealing with in my life and made it work on my knee. The word work on that, specifically pointing to it. But you can do that with finances. You can do that with, 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 with relationships. You can do that with anything. But get you a good confession book. <laughs> Get you a book that's loaded down with confessions. And, and just whatever's going on, as you continue to meditate and read in scriptures, and God will give you a rainbow word. God will give you a, a, a prophetic word. He'll give you a rainbow word that will tell you what you need to be saying. That's why we are saying this time next year, because God gave us that word. This time next year, our lives are going to be at a higher level. That's why we're saying I'm not just saying that. God gave it to us. Success is different. I'm saying that because I heard God say that. Success is different. So we're speaking that. Success is different, but then I'm studying out what different means. 
That's how you work the word. You don't just read stuff and go on. No, you work the word into your life. You work the word into your life. You work the word into your life. So that we're prepared and ready to do the things that God has called us to do. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Philippians 2. Your first confession is, and it's real plain, real simple. Jesus is Lord. Not my job. Not my bank account. Not what some man going to do for me. Jesus is Lord of my life. That's what you need to say on a regular basis, even if you don't know what it means. And folks don't. But say it. Jesus is Lord of my life. I saw, I saw a guy get off drugs by simply saying, Father, I thank you that I'm delivered off cigarettes. I'm delivered from cigarettes. Why are we smoking? We were smoking cigarettes. But he got a hold of confessions and recognized that he could talk his way off of them. That while he was smoking them, he said, Father, I thank you that I was delivered from cigarettes. And then the, the, the packs got smaller and smaller. He kept it in and stopped buying them. Next thing you know, he cut it in half and smoked one and nine. And a little bit later, next thing you know, he kept that confession. He kept that confession. Next thing you know, he didn't want them no more. <laughs> That's what you need to do with Junior. You need to keep confessing. Even though you go see him, stop, stop, confess that I don't want him no more. <laughs> she said, no junior over here. I'm just trying to tell you how to quit mess with junior. And you know what you're doing? Lord, take him away from me. May him leave me alone. Don't that sound familiar? Yeah, yeah. That's the wrong, that's the wrong confession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you. That I don't want to thank you. Junior no more. I don't want I don't want no more. I don't want no more. You know what you've been saying? Ooh, I just can't, I just can't do without him. I just can't stop seeing it. And you can't. But you keep saying that. I can't do without him. I can't stop seeing it. That's your confession. That's your confession, and you can't stop seeing it. And you can't do without him. Switch the confession. All right. Oh, I think. I can't stand and look at it. <laughs> hey, y'all think I'm crazy. I'm serious. You got to get crazy like that. The word of God, faith, don't make sense. Faith don't make sense. It don't make sense to stand flat-footed and you know you got bills and you're saying, Father, I thank you. That I'm debt free. And I owe no man anything but to love. That don't make sense. Didn't make sense for me. I stood, my car was acting up, and I stood out there, and my car kept messing up and stuff. And I went and prayed, and I got up out of the car, and I got outside the car. I looked around, see if I was looking. <laughs> I said, "You gonna crank now in the name of Jesus? I ain't got time for this today. I gotta get to work. You crank now in Jesus' name." Did I tell y'all, did I read it? Did I, did I tell y'all to get it? I did? I didn't read it? What happened to it? Wherefore, wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above what? Amen. Next, that at the name of Jesus, what? Jesus. How many? Every. How many? Every. How many is that? All, All of them. All right. Of things, <laughs> about, of things in heaven? And things in earth and things what? Earth. Just stop right there. Ain't nothing left. My Lord. Everything else is under Jesus. My 
Everything else is underneath him. Everything else is underneath his name. So when you say Jesus is Lord of my life, that's your confession. You put in everything else that's demonic, that's demon possessed, all that stuff is underneath you. Does that make sense to anybody? Y'all get anything from this today? Yeah. It's good. I'll give y'all the rest of the confessions next Sunday. Y'all got to come back. <laughs> Amen. 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 So we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit more about that. We're going to say some stuff. We're going to start talking the word of God. We're going to start speaking, uh, calling those things that be not as though they were. We're going we're gonna to be proactive in saying some things about our lives. We're going to talk some people out of our lives. We're going to talk some circumstances and situations out of our lives. We're going to speak money into our lives. Wholeness and health. Long life. We're going to speak into our lives. And I know, yeah, I know, I know. A lot of people don't, it, it don't work for everybody. But you don't know if everybody working it or not. We all look spiritual and, and all into it right now. But it's how you look when ain't nobody around. So we don't know the answer to that. So we can't judge anybody else's circumstance or situation. What you can judge is what you do. Somebody say amen. amen. If you're here today, you've never really given your life to Christ. You've never confessed Jesus.